Most of the world sees the planet as very spiritual. Uh, Americans uh, tend to have a, a, a conversation between atheism or agnosticism and belief or faith in Christianity, but most of the world is actually profoundly spiritual. Even when we would call them atheists, they understand the world to be uh, more than just the material reality. There's a dynamic that's there. And I, I begin here this morning just to maybe remind you that there is more going on in the world than meets the eye. That sometimes we try to pretend that there isn't an invisible reality taking place, but there is. And, and I look back at my life and I realize I had somehow tapped into some strange things in my early journey as a human being. And sometimes they were dark, and, and sometimes I think it was God drawing me to himself. But I really didn't have the discernment to know the difference. And, and I think a lot of us don't really have a healthy understanding of spiritual realities. And what Paul is telling us is, is look, there's, there's something more powerful than the material world, and it affects your life. It wouldn't be a big deal if it had no effect on us. So, but our struggle is not against flesh and blood, and it's against rulers and authorities and powers in this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And he says, therefore, there's something you can do about it, and this is why you need to change the way you act and live, because this reality is there, and you may be unaware of it. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and the breastplate of righteousness in place and your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You have to pray. You have to believe that your conversations with God create activity in the invisible that has tangible effect in the visible reality. And then you need to actively declare my love, my forgiveness, my truth, my son, without fear into the world. And I was invited to go up there for a friend to just to talk on a Sunday, and I thought, you know, he was a pastor of a very affluent community, and I thought, I'm gonna go to Minnesota where there are normal people and enjoy a day up there. And so I went there to speak and I stayed in this family's home, this beautiful house. And in the middle of the night while I'm relaxing, just getting ready for the next day, the, the man who lives there gets a phone call and he seemed very frantic. And I, and I thought, oh no, something bad's gonna happen. And, and then he got off the phone and he was shaking. I said, what's wrong? He goes, I just got a call. He had a friend who was like the president of a bank and his son came home from school that day in elementary school. And, and they had sent him home because he just started violently uh, acting out against other kids and, and spewing out all kinds of vile profanity. And, and, for, and this kid had been such a good kid, and all of a sudden it just seemed like evil had captured this kid. And they said they think he was demonized, and so they asked me if I wanted to go, and, or would I go and help them? And I go, yeah, I'm, I'm an expert, so let's go. And so we get in the car in the middle of the night, and we spent this whole night. But it wasn't with this little boy. When he came home, it triggered something in his mother's mind and his parents, her parents, had been involved in a satanic cult and used to involve her in demonic rituals as a child. And she had blocked that out of her mind all of her life. In this moment when her son turned, it somehow brought everything back to the surface. And when we got there, this woman was being tormented spiritually. We spent the whole night in an exorcism. And here was this beautiful, elegant, educated human being in a perfectly normal family. And I was again reminded that none of us are far from the realities of spiritual warfare. Part of what Jesus came to do is to free us from the power of evil and the captivity of the demonic. I mean, Erwin, everything is interconnected, connected, connected. Everything in the, in the material world has direct activity in the spiritual world. It is all spiritual. It's just whether it's material or invisible. I wonder if you've been living unaware of your spiritual essence. If you've forgotten that you're a spiritual being. 
or that somehow in your core you know there's more going on than meets the eye. Everything I do, every day I live, I live with the ever-present reality that we are interconnected to something bigger than what we can see or touch.